Did you grab your cup of coffee this morning? This happens to be my second one. Americans drink more than 400 million cups of coffee every day. And you may be surprised to know that, that what, this is one habit that's been proven to be good for your health. So how do you maximize the nutritional benefits from your cup of joe? Joining us now is Abby Stone. She's the executive editor, editor of Well and Good. Welcome this morning. So we have a lot of opinions about coffee. So I need you to set it straight for us. First of all, how do you, do you drink coffee and how do you take it? I do. I'm a big coffee drinker. Haven't had it yet this morning. I'm going to run and grab a cup <laughs> right when this is over. Um, and I like to put oat milk in my coffee. Okay, well, you get extra points for having not consumed caffeine yet, and it's 925 <laughs> in the morning. But, but first, first tell us, what are the health benefits of coffee? Sure. So coffee is packed with health benefits. Um, to name three of them, it is high in antioxidants. It is high in magnesium, which is a mineral that's been linked to um, stable energy levels, better bone health and cardiovascular health. And it's high in potassium, which has been linked to lower blood pressure. I really had no idea that all of those things existed in coffee, but I think like anything else, we want to do things in moderation. There are also a lot of us who will take all those fantastic things and then dilute it because some of us like our coffee light and sweet. So what's something we can add to our coffee besides sugar if we can't rid ourselves of our sweet tooth? Teeth. Sure. So flavored syrups in particular are really high in added sugar, like you said. So if you're looking to add a little bit of a flavor to your coffee, you could try adding cinnamon instead. Um, which is packed with heart healthy antioxidants. I like that. I like to add cinnamon just because it makes me feel like I'm a barista at home. <laughs> uh, I can never imagine having coffee, and I do two cups a day. Um, so don't judge me. Uh, but I have, <laughs> I, I cannot not have some sort of creamer in it. Um, what is the best way to boost health benefits if we like to add something to our coffee? Sure. So, first of all, a little splash of milk in your coffee is really nothing to be afraid of. Um, it's totally fine in moderation, like you said. But the creamers that some people like to add can be really high in saturated fats and added sugars and other additives. So if non-dairy creamer is what you tend to reach for, you could opt for a plant-based option, like the oat milk that I like, or a almond-based um, non-dairy creamer. These have heart-healthy monosaturated fats instead. I like that. I actually, I co-sign with you in the oat milk category, and I find if you shake it and you pour it on, then it's almost like it's a little frothy on the top. Anything mm. to get us through the morning, really. There's a tip for you. <laughs> um, this next tip I, I did not, also didn't know, also very interesting. Uh, we should skip the French press. Why is that? Mm. Yeah, know. so I just learned this, interest, uh, this interesting fact as well. So. When you use a French press, you're not using a paper filter to make your coffee. And research has shown that unfiltered coffee can be linked with higher mortality rates and lower heart health. Um, so, and the reason for that is because it lets in oils and chemicals that are linked to LDL cholesterol, which is the kind of cholesterol you don't want. Um, so in order to maximize the health benefits in your brewing, it's best to just stick to an old fashioned paper filter method. What about no paper filter? I have, in Spanish, we call it la greca, which I guess is like an espresso machine. What about that? Mm. It's not a paper filter, but there is a filter in there of sorts. I think any sort of filter helps with the benefits, um, but a paper filter kind of has the most uh, it's the, the biggest barrier to those fats and oils. All right, Abby, I'm going to bring in the team. Two of us drink yeah. coffee, one of us does not. Well, mm -hmm. here's my question. Okay, Dan. Because she's at, you're talking about paper filters, right? Yes. So there's two things. One, I use a French press for the cold brew, but that's okay. <laughs> besides the point. But what about the coffee pots that don't have the paper filters anymore because they're trying to save on oh, the yeah. environment, right? So like they have that, like I have the Ninja Coffee Maker and it mm -hmm. comes like a mesh reusable. Hmm. I imagine it's the, it's the same deal. So a little bit less filtering than with the paper, but yeah. still, still, you know, doing a bit better than nothing at all. Doing okay. The, doing the job. So you're saying that, because yeah. I'm always like, well, you know what? A teaspoon of this coffee creamer is not going to do much to me. Is that okay? 
I mean, it's all it's all levels of, of risk and reward. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to tell you to not, <laughs> to not drink your coffee the way that you want to. I think a good general rule if you're picking a creamer is to look at the ingredients. And if it's a simple list of ingredients that you understand, then yeah. that's generally a good place to start. Gotcha. I do always wonder about those creamers because a lot of them are not refrigerated. They're just sitting out and you're thinking, what is in that? Mm -hmm. I love the oat milk, though. Oat milk is good. Yeah, that's I'm what I do. You. Well, Abby, thank you so much for entertaining us and also teaching us about coffee. We learned yeah. a lot. And if you at home would like more health tips like this, head to Well and Good. Thanks, Thanks Abby. Abby. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank sure. you.